Hey everyone, welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Dollar Will, and this is another episode. So tonight, got a special guest. First time on the show. How about you introduce yourself, my man? Uh, author, uh, entrepreneur, part-time rapper, part-time executive producer, <laughs> part-time everything, uh, Stephen Dottery. Okay, okay, man. Welcome to the 1804 Show, man. I know that we supposed to have been done this, but, you know, the universe has to align it, but, you know, I always thought that you was such a wonderful person, man. Just, you know, you be positive every day and you're a true role model. Yeah, so how about you take us all the way back from the beginning? As far back as I can remember, uh, growing up on Bellevue, three years old, um, youngest of five, my man and dad both in my life and just uh, getting in the way of the truck walking. Hey, youngest of five, I bet you, so, so I bet you was four, you would huh? That's what they say. That's what everybody say. And I, I can't really disagree with it. I can't really disagree with it. But I got picked on like a little brother a lot too. Oh, I can imagine. I was the youngest of three. And it was just crazy because like my sister was always overprotected of me. And she's still like that. I can pretty much be an old man and she's gonna be like, you better leave my little brother alone, only I can fuck one of them and shit. That's, that's what my brother was, that's what my brother was doing, man. I tell everybody that was my, my personal superhero. If you, if, you, if you got past me, you have to deal with that. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, you know, such a, um, a blessing, because, you know, I tell everybody, man, like, it ain't easy. Um, going through life without a sibling, especially your person, like the person that you was connected with and know all your secrets, know all your vulnerabilities and stuff like that, but it's just one of those things that like I look back on because you know, you don't realize how good you have it till it's gone. Yeah. And stuff. But, yeah, those those my original best friends. I mean, I got a lot of cousins, and all of my cousins are like brothers and sisters too. So I had a tight, tight, tight family. So I had a lot of, I had a lot of love. Yeah, so pretty much like you know, I want you to talk about like you know, as far as like your upbringing, like so y'all was very close knit. You know, involved and with just, you know, making sure that things went well and, you know, being more like um, community oriented or you were just always like that. Uh, well, I, I went through changes. I went through the same changes everybody else went through. But like from the beginning, I always had people that always wanted to steer me in the right direction. When I say it was my whole family, I, like I mean that for real. Um, like even when I might have possibly taken a long time. The right people knew when to correct me and keep me on the straight and narrow. But I grew up in a church household. Mm -hmm. My mom made sure we went to Sunday school. She made sure we went to Bible school during the summer. Um, we did a lot of activities like that and stuff, like dealing with the school and everything else too. Because my mom was a teacher. Okay. And my mom did a lot of community work too. So she kept that. I think that's where I get that spirit from. Okay. If anybody, if anybody knows me. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's just, it's just crazy. Like when you go back and. Revisit your past. It just everything happens so fast, and I just always, you know, try to live life to the fullest, man. Regardless of what's going on, your bad day is somebody's last day, and you have to be grateful just to God, because a lot of people like to call God when things going wrong and when they feel like they're back against the wall. But I always talk to God, even she. On my way to work, man, people be thinking I'm crazy and this and that. No, all day, all day, every day. All day, every day. I keep that line of communication open. Mm -hmm. Constantly. Yeah, so, um, you know, we from Saginaw, of course, and stuff like that. So, what's your perspective on Saginaw? Like, what's 
your whole just makeup of Saturday. My, my perspective is like an optimistic one. Like, I see the same like, stuff everybody else sees from Saturday night. Mm-hmm. And um, time time. And you got the good and the bad, and then you got the potential. And I'd rather focus on the good and the potential than everything else. Um, and I just try to stay out of the way as far as the negative aspects of it. I'm just spending sunny days in the shade. Yeah, that's that's the most I can do as an individual until I make something better on myself and create that path for other people. I heard they talk yeah, I agree, and I've really been, you know, trying to, you know, link up with certain people and to organize an event that we can send college, well, kids to college and stuff like that on, like, scholarships and stuff. That's my um, end game, for real, is to just give back to the youth and stuff like that, because... Cause we just, I don't know, it's just, I'm, I'm not shitting on my city because this will always be home, but realistically, it just, negativity is in the forefront, yeah. but there's a lot of good people here, it's a whole lot of positivity, it's a whole lot of talent here, and it just being misguided or misled to the wrong things, cause, cause we've been programmed, like, to um, adapt in our environment mm-hmm. and because I always say like black Saginaw has always been different from white Saginaw <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah but in the same way in the same way black Twitter is different from Twitter yeah like that yeah absolutely yeah and, and and it's just you know being a young black male and you pretty much not um a nigga, you know what I'm saying? You a black man, and it's a difference with that because it's like your know, your views is different, your experiences are different because you was able to change your environment, you was able to um, to see other things, and just by me going to New York, going to St. Louis, going to Detroit, um, I would say that I had, it humbled me a lot, just, especially Detroit, because I was living on Six Miles, and the stuff that I saw there, man, <laughs> and I, I, I mean, you know, reading a whole lot of people comments about, man, it's so dusty here, ain't nothing here, and I seen nothing, I seen dusty, yeah. and I tell everybody, like, man, do you really truly realize how good we have it here and how blessed we are? Because I would say just with Saginaw, it's just one big side of town in a large city. But it just also it's just like you really see like the difference of poverty and you really see just how it affects the mindset because a lot of people down there they couldn't really digest the things i would say because i would just go to work and just be walking on broken glass and seeing drug paraphernalia on the ground and all these border of houses, man, it was an eyesore yeah. to me. And you felt like Outworld or more Combat or something like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> but other places, but the, you know, other areas are beautiful too, but just in my neighborhood that I stayed with my sister and her children, man, it was really tough to just really be able to stomach that and just, you know, try to just live positive and this and that because it was just like, dang, I didn't have to be here and I just was like, dang, God, why you sent me here, you know, what, what you got me here for because I don't believe that things happen just within coincidence, there's always a reason why God places us certain places to change our minds and to make us do better, but my question to you is, did you ever have like a situation where you was placed somewhere and you had no idea why you was there, but later on you got the message? Yeah, yeah. Too many times to really just remember off the top of my head. I will say, so what I learned from those experiences is just a lot. It's a lot of them. Some of it happened gradually, so gradually that you don't really notice the change. But you know, when you say everything happens for a reason, for a purpose, like 
trying to find that perfect song and seeing you on the journey. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, it's up and down. It's like a, it's like a roller coaster. And you don't know how or when it's going to end. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's a constant growth process. And it's like, it's like planting a seed. You know what I mean? From going from a seed to a full sprouted tree. Mm-hmm. It's such a gradual process, you, you don't notice the difference until you reflect it. Yeah, I agree. And I always tell people, like, you know, it's a purpose with seeds, you know what I'm saying? Because when you look at seeds, you, like, it's just a damn seed. Like, it's so no no importance until that seed grow or until that seed uh, blossom. Mm-hmm. Then you be like, wow, like, it's beautiful now. And I just think that, you know, everybody, you know, wants to be that finished product, but you gotta be a seed first in order for you to be that finished product. And you have to go through things, you have to experience things, you have to take losses. And chances make champions, man. And I'm always like grateful for those losses that I took. Because that's your character. And it just so much behind pain. You know, like I'll always just just make sure that I look at every layer of you know my show, my episodes, and my content, because we have enough of toxicity going on. So I want to just make sure that I bring some authenticity, some realness, and this and that, and really just um, look at the layers of people, of what made them who they are today, and just allowing them to vent and stuff like that, because everything is isn't a pity party, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that crying out for help. Yeah, no idea what people are going through. It's a whole lot of, of madness in the world and just we have to be better and I try to do better with, with myself. You know, we are a work in progress. We are, you know, building ourselves up regardless of age. But I just think that, you know, we can do a lot more as individuals. Absolutely. And and that's the most that I feel like I can do. Take care take care of my end as an individual mm-hmm. and be the biggest influence that I can to whoever might be paying attention. You never know who is watching you. You never know who can learn from your experiences. Or you never know who just never saw a different perspective. So everybody that I interact with, at least they get something a little bit different from me. Because I'm a different, unique kind of person. Yeah. Which I, have, I, have, I have to learn to be fine with that. A lot of people can't. I have to learn to be fine with me being different from everybody else and just appreciating it and looking at it as a strength instead of a uh, disadvantage or deformity. Yeah, absolutely. And what got you into music, man? Music is music has always been a part of who I am. I think music is. I think the world operates on rhythm, mm-hmm. in a sense. And like you know, they talk about vibration and things of that sort. I think music is like the purest form of that. That's why it's expressed in so many different ways, and we can appreciate it in so many different ways. And it's something for everybody. Like I think music is pure in that way. So it's, I think it's always been a part of it. My family. I come from a family of musicians on my dad's side, mm-hmm. and I took to that naturally. It just happened. It just so happened that my instrument is my words, my speech. I, I, like I don't play guitar or drums or trumpet or anything like that. But I feel like I took to it pretty naturally, and I'm good at it the way my family is with instruments. But also, like uh, just growing up. My dad, my mom, my sister, my brother, they all had slightly different tastes in music. And everything that they listened to was poured in me and kind of molded what I appreciate about music. Yeah. And I miss that. I really miss how the music just took you elsewhere. Mm-hmm. No matter what you was going through, whatever song came on, it took you away from that 
so the situation two, three, four, five minutes mm-hmm. out of it, and then you just felt a lot better. A lot better. A lot better. <laughs> whatever, whatever it was, whatever it was at that moment, um, at least for me, whatever it was at that moment, the right song could could shift me in the right direction. And it, it, like it's still that way to the, today, even if I'm just listening to like classic stuff, because the the material in that classic stuff is still relevant right now today. Oh, absolutely, man. How about you give us your top five? Top five what? Rappers. Uh, it changes. It changes. Right now, today. And I got number three. Big L number four. And number five is the tricky one. Because that's the one that shifts. But I got Nas number five right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Nas and his late... Because he... I mean, Nas has been Nas for his Oh, no doubt. Yeah. What he's doing right now, late in his career, I can only applaud him. Man. That dude, that man is... He's still there. He's still up there. Yeah. On the top level. Yeah. And... I always tell everybody, like, when it comes to Nas, like, it was written, that's my album, it was written, because I like Illmatic, because the lyrical content and just the fact, like, he was young, like, 19, um, recording all of that, but it was written, it was really commercial, but it was more like, a story. It was a movie. If you really like pay attention to like the skits and the production and I, yeah, I think I think it was written with like a sonic upgrade. Yeah, like it, it had a sound and a feel that like yeah, yeah. I know exactly. Yeah, what you mean. I know exactly. What you mean. Even with, like I can't put it in the correct words right now, but it's just a, a feel to it. Like when I listen to it was written for some reason, I feel like I got it. Like when I clocked on nobody or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no doubt, man. Me too, man. It's just very therapeutic. Like, I love it because this is, um, of course, the, with the street dreams and the, um, um, all eyes on me, you know, even though it's the same song and this and that, and everybody was just was speculate like dang like they beefing in this and that because it was just a you know back in the days when we was coming up but now like this record is looked upon as corny but it was the um sport it was, it was. part of the um diaspora it of was. rap it was. and and i just think like nowadays it's just a lot of people very sensitive a lot of people can have their opinion which is cool but it's just like y'all really taking the fun out of things because it's like when it comes to competition, us as black people, man, it's toxic. It can get deadly and this and that. It's not competitive. It's not respect when it comes to rap music anymore. Yeah. So I always like just appreciate anybody who's the number one guy and somebody else like, okay, I'm coming for your spot and this and that. But we going to um, you know, let the sales and the numbers speak yeah. for itself and. Yeah. And it's just when it comes now a days, it's just that, you know, people want you out the way so they can have your spot. But you can have your own spot and I can have my own spot. What's wrong with just being competitive, you know what I'm saying? And it's just really bad now because you can't really call yourself great or you can't call yourself a goat or you can't call yourself the best without somebody wanting to take your head off you know it's, it's like right. a yeah. it's like an insult to everybody else but it's not it's just it's, it's been it's been that way for so long though and um i don't 100 percent disagree with it i feel like it's a nuance in the mm-hmm. and i feel like Rap music has changed so much to where there's so many different flavors and so many people that want something different. So like, I feel like it's hard to tell what's the best or how to prove you the best. You know what I mean? But the competition aspect of it, I don't have a, I don't have a direct problem with it, especially since I consider that to be something between those two rappers or whoever might be involved. Um, I just know me personally, I don't require that of an artist. Mm-hmm. Like if you just want to make songs or entertain people and you're good at it, hey, I, I applaud it. But if it, if it happens, then hey, go for it, go for it. Just, I hope it don't get too, too tight. Yeah. Which it obviously can. Yeah. 
and I just went back at all the rappers who was killed and this and that. We had so many rappers that's gone to, to the point of we can't even count nowadays. It just happens at a speedy rate. It, it's scary because it's like, do I want to accomplish my dream? So when I do accomplish my dream, who I gotta watch for? You know, who gonna switch up on me or who, who's the enemy this whole time type thing? Cause that's what comes with success. And I tell everyone that cause they should see the accolades. They see, you know, what they um, perception is. But it's stressful. It's stressful putting yourself out there because you don't know how the world is going to perceive you. And it can be real dangerous because you just never know what can happen and stuff like that. And you still try to process everything and you don't really see like who's really like happy for you or who's clapping and who's praying or who's praying on it's, you. It's a you sacrifice. Know? It's a sacrifice. Yeah. Any, any, any kind of celebrity is like a personal sacrifice. You pretty much give a portion of your life to the public and you, um, might not be guaranteed to get it back. I tell, I tell people all the time, like, Bobby Brown can never be a normal person again. If he never recorded another song, he can never be a regular, everyday person. So, like, every any form of celebrity, um, the degrees vary, but it's like a personal sacrifice. And then that rap, I feel like in rap, it's worse because the spotlight is so much higher. Yeah. Like, it's, it's the eyes on you, and the eyes on you are more critical because people are already critical of hip-hop as a culture and a genre of music. Even even when people like it, they still extra critical. So, it's, it's much worse. Like, you really, you really have to be ready to say, hey, this is my life now. No doubt. And have you ever thought about this? How, you know, people can go to like the country music awards and nobody get shot or nobody get, get into a fight. But the moment somebody go to a BT award, it's, the security is so stacked up and it's always something at those type of events. And I just always kind of like felt that you know why it had to be our genre that those things happen and it just really gets me to the point of you know not you know just thinking about oh just making it in the streets anymore i'm thinking globally you know i'm thinking like touching all seven continents and just being um all, all that and just making sure that you know, I get everybody on here because at first when I did the show, I wanted it to be a black show, you know, just a black show. But then I was just like, no, I can't do that because every race is special, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not um, racist. I'm pro-black, of course, you know, I'm about my people. But I feel like we all can learn from everybody. Yeah, everybody, everybody got value. Everybody got value. And I don't mean like monetary value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Value to livelihood. No doubt. No doubt. And I just wanted to ask you, man, just about like you as an artist. Um, I, I know you go by Cream, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what made you choose that name? So, um, a friend of mine used to call me Cream. I was like, Okay. And when I started doing music, I wanted to have something different because I was kind of trying to be like a throwback artist. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to have something that sounded like it came from the 80s, 90s. Um, so I was calling myself Cream on that show. Mm -hmm. But all of my friends called me Cream for short. People in the music scene, people that know me like like on the personal level, outside of doing music, it was in Steve and Earl's prayer. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to shorten it. And, um, Take the lead, take the lead. Okay. So instead of P R E and E, it's P R E and E. Okay. Yeah, and just like with your music, um, cause, cause I haven't heard any of your music yet. Yes. But I know you're gonna impress me, cause you kind of like, I don't know, it's like the moment I when we when we first like met at at White's and everything like that, 
you're just very chill, very laid back. So I know like you as an artist, it's just um, gonna be surprising because you're expressing yourself, you know, you're really, you know, um, stepping up to the um, podium and stuff like that. Cause I used to do music too and stuff. And I tell everybody about recording and stuff. Very good. Good morning, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, so when I got you, um, you know, so like I said, when I met you and stuff, you know, you just very um, chill and everything. So when I tell everybody about the recording process, because uh, again, they just see and hear the finished product. But when you're recording, it's like, um, <laughs> it, it's, it's very um, hectic, you know, and then depending on the, the, the feel and stuff. So, how like your writing process and your recording process is like you know you, if you can give us like a few um tips on just with anybody who's trying to be an artist oh um, let me see so the little the little bit that i can give is like so so for the record mm -hmm. i gave up pursuing music about about 15 years ago. Okay. The only reason why I got back to doing music now is because I'm pushing my merchandise company and part of the marketing is music. And, it's, and, it's, and it's the visuals have been even, even like, so I got this character here. Yeah. And this is like a hip hop based character. Okay. So everything is inspired by music. So the marketing, I want it to be hip hop based also. And I'm, I'm doing music to make brownstones for. Or what other people are going to be contributing to. Because I'm bringing other people in. It's not, just, it's not just me. As a matter of fact, I got a lot of songs recorded. And aside from like two, every single song that I've done is on the chopping block for whoever comes and replaces it with something I like, more, I like more. But um, as far as my recording process, if you're going to do music or anything artistic, mm -hmm. you got to be comfortable with yourself. You got to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And you got to... Make sure you target the people like you or the people that can appreciate you. Yeah. None of this should be about you trying to do what somebody else do or be who somebody else is. Yeah. That's, most of the hiccups I made early on trying to trying to do music came from me trying to figure out what people were like and trying to please everybody. Yeah. And it all got lost. It was no personality. It was a lot of clever, a lot of clever words and some nice beats, but none of it was me. Okay. Yeah. And I tell everybody all the time, there's a difference between an MC and a rapper, you know what I'm saying? Which one you want to be, because MCs is, I feel, you know, they respect the culture, they have a lot to say, they give out messages, they drop jewels and stuff, because I just so sick of people talking about they hate on the new dudes and the, the new era and stuff like that. And my thing is, is that the new era, you know, they just doing it because everybody else is doing it or, you know, they thinking that, okay, well, I can get affiliated in a, in a gang or, you know, get girls and this and that. But you have people who are um, lyrical and this and that, like they was inspired to do that. And you hear, you know, the Kendricks and Cole and this and that. Like I, I, I love them, you know. I, I even love um, Big Crip because Big Crip is slept on like a mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love Big Crip. Big Crip man. Crazy. He go crazy. But, he got he got his people. He got his his. Uh, I don't want to call it a cult following, but he got his core fan base. So yeah. He, he, he pleases people, but Crit, yeah, Crit, Crit is one of those. Yeah. No doubt, man. And I like King Los. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, King Los, man. He dope, man. And, and just other people, um, like Major Nine, man. And, 
I just enjoy, um, cause like I said, you know, it's a time and place for everything, but it just, nowadays, it's just, everybody is a follower, you know what I'm saying? If you're not liking it, what everybody else liking, like they say, like, man, you, like, nobody want to hear that shit, you know, nobody want to bop their head to that old shit, but I love just, you know, like I said, I love everything, and I just try to just, you know, be fair, you know, but if it's trash, it's trash, you know what I'm saying? And, I, I, I got what I feel like is the person, perfect analogy for that. Like I, I equate it, I equate it to food. Yeah. Um, like people talk about the difference between hip hop and rap. Like first of all, hip hop is a whole culture. Like rap is just the MC and part is just a part of it. But I look at it like um, hip hop would be soul food. Yeah. And rap would be like fried chicken. Yeah. Like you can have a soul food dinner with some good fried chicken. But everybody that fried chicken ain't making soul food. Mm, no. You know what I mean? Like you got a bunch of chicken chains spots that I don't want to name. Like, yeah, you might, you might, like it might be good. You, you could, you could eat it. You know what I mean? Like you might like it. Yeah. But it ain't, it ain't exactly the same. I like, and I have some bad soul food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some pure hip hop is not the best. Mm -hmm. But you know what I mean? But it come from, it come from their own personal perspective. And they're really trying to put themselves into it. But yeah, I've had some soul food in the world. Like, I, I probably would have rather had some KFC. But it's, it's still not the same. Oh, no doubt, man. And, and the best part right now, I, you know, I'm working on the six mixtape support versus surveillance and stuff like that. And I love it, man. Uh, oh, thank you, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just really enjoyed that because there's so much surveillance going on nowadays and I just enjoy that I really stepped my game up, got the got the host AG on it and stuff like that and and we really like dissecting songs and stuff like that because I know everybody like, oh you don't rap and this and that, like why are you dropping mixtapes and if anything, I'm doing it because I support you guys, you know, I support everybody that's on it because I love everybody's style and what everybody can bring to my brand and their brand. It's a fair exchange, but I just don't um, go for chicken tenders when I know that you can provide a better course, a better meal. Because even now, because um, a lot of artists, you know, they've ever sensitive with their craft and with their songs and stuff like that. Because I had to call somebody and be like, come on, bro, I know you got something better than this, you know what I'm saying? Not just shit on you and shit like that. Like, I love you, but this song is just, it ain't going with my vision and my theme. And I know you got something better that you um, have in the archives and stuff, but... If anything, I try to push people to get better and just to be like themselves and it just really gets to um, like, like a point of it's just so many yes men, you know, around and they're not going to tell you the truth. They're not going to you know, tell you what you need to hear. They go and buy what you um going for or your flow but even I have to get corrected sometimes you know and I take criticism like a mud you know I realize that I'm not for everybody but I also know that if I can't feel it then I can't do it you know then it's not gonna feel right you know and you gotta block the noise because you also have to be wary of who advice you take from because you don't know if it's a place of love or a place of hate right and, or just a place of, of misunderstanding mm -hmm. yeah a misunderstanding you know being misunderstood to me I feel like you're doing something right when you are not mis when you misunderstood because it allows you to give a thesis on what you say and be able to be more expressive and because a lot of people they just like oh oh what you mean about that one history segment that you mean about uh, how we um, was better off segregated. And I have to really explain to people like, because we was together. It was fathers in the home during those type of um, situations, you know, 
being like in the Jim Crow South and civil rights movements, we was together. We was organized. Like we got killed together. Nowadays, it's someone that looks like you with the same color as you is behind that trigger now. Compared to, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. But <laughs> but I just always just you know try to you know just give people just a chance to. Just really, just step it up because I don't, because I don't, because I, because I don't look at myself as local because I'm not local. You know what I'm saying? If anything, the whole world is seeing the videos or it's just you know listening to the music because I see everything through my analytics, man. And people actually going back and listening to like my old songs and the old um, episodes and stuff. So. I just always try to represent us in a great light because we are great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's not about me. Absolutely. And back back to the point you made about the you know about the whole uh, being separate and everything. Like mm-hmm. I want pe- I really want people to understand that that's like a layered problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a layered problem with required layered solutions that's uh you in the pits can meet each other kind of hard in the sky. Right now. Yeah, but like people like me and you, I see people like me and you keep trying to encourage the right messages and the right uh, perspectives. Um, hopefully, with more of that, we start to get some traction on the things in the world. And it's uh, that that alone is a tough fight on top of everything else. Uh, that we got going on. Yeah, well, no doubt, man. And, 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 and to me, it's just like you know, every year it's just I can just feel the, um, the growth in all of us. Cause you know, you're not the same person like you was last year. You know, not at all. Uh, that's, it's so crazy you said that. Cause man, I can look back on this time last year and I wasn't me. I was real. And, and, but like I said before, it takes for you to stop and reflect. Cause you don't notice the changes. Sometimes I feel like I'm not doing anything. Or I feel like I'm not doing enough. Mm-hmm. And then I have to stop and look back. And I list everything that I've accomplished. I list what I'm doing day to day. And it's more than the average person that I know. Yeah. And I told myself at the beginning of the journey that this was going to take time. Yeah. And I just had to commit to it. Yeah. So every now and then I have to stop and remind myself, you're on track. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's tough, you know, even, even for me. And because I, I just think that everybody who's chasing after something that they want, it's, it's, it's going to be like, you know, it's you versus you, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, oh, you, you got away with words. I'm, I'm in. You got away with I'm, words. That's, that's, two, that's two that you hit me with. The, yeah. The, the, the support over surveillance and the you versus you. I know, I know. You versus you, like people understand that, like it's, it's a common, like people know that that's what it is. But the way you said it, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because when you want something so bad, you will have to get something up, man. Because I tell everybody, like, I was never no frequent reader like that. And I had to really train myself to to really read things and stuff. Because I've always been a good reader. i always been articulated and smart and this and that. But that was only for, like, a homework assignment or a, a paper and stuff. But to actually, um, you know, to do this and just you know not get the recognition not get the praise and stuff like that or like the views on my research and stuff like that it it, it, it gets tough because you know i just remember just being at work all the time man on my breaks while everybody eating their food or People going outside to smoke. I'm actually, you know, reading a book about Dr. King and Malcolm X and stuff and being in the park and people looking at me like, like what you reading that for? And I'm like, I'm doing a, a history segment. Like, history? Like, nobody be watching or caring about that shit no more. And I'm like, well, I care about it. You know, I know somebody else. Yeah, and I know somebody else. Um, you know, want to learn something. So I just always used to just, you know, be down because it was like, damn, like, 
does anybody appreciate the work I'm doing? But I have to tell myself every day, it's like, you know, your um, self-doubt isn't what everybody else thinks, you know what I'm saying? And you have to tell yourself that you're doing the right thing, regardless of um, who um, don't show up, who don't clap, and this and that. Like I said, I learned all of this last month, you know what I'm saying? Because I was by myself when we did that show and everything. I showed up by myself. I invited people to, people to show up. So, you know, I got upset because it was just like, you know, if... I was going to court. I know a lot of people would have been there, you know, just to yeah. see me down bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the the yeah, yeah. You know, they just would love to be there to see you at your worst, so they can have something to talk about. But when you're doing something good and you do something great, you know, you will find out who really shows up for you. And and it's just like with your artistry and your music, man, like. Do you feel like you by yourself or do you have some support? You have, you know, someone that's like in your ear, you know, telling you to keep going and doing great, doing just fine. Yeah, I always I always get support. Um, again with the music, like I say, I haven't been active in it for a while. But um everybody that, that liked it when I was doing it, they still support it now. I get a few people. Every time I do a show, I get a new person come up to me and introduce themselves. Um, and those little small moments make a difference. Those little small moments where somebody that you never met before, mm-hmm. never had a care in the world about you, go out and they wait and tell you, hey, I like what you do. I like this about it. I like that about it. Those small moments, they, um, they amount to something for me. Not, not necessarily in a big way, but just it's still confirmation. I may have only a few eyes on me, but the few eyes do. And, and, and that's the same, the same with my books. I've never had a bad review on any of my books. Even I've had some constructive criticism, and even that, the way they break it down, I can tell that it's not there and that was interesting. And I had that attention. Um, I didn't get a, my last book. I didn't get a lot of readers on, but on my book reviews, I got high scores. Okay. My professional book reviews, I got I got a on, um, online book club. I got a four out of four star. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah, and I thought it, I thought it was a mistake until I read the whole breakdown, and they caught. All of the little, <laughs> all of the little details. You, I know, I know that was just like so shocking for you. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was, a, it was a different experience, and it was funny because they had a different favorite character from who my favorite character was, and it, it was, it was a great feeling. I had strangers that I never met before tell me it was phenomenal. So, yeah, you may not get a lot of support, but I know I'm on the pathway to prove to the people. That doubted me wrong, and I know I'm on the pathway to getting, getting back all of those people that I'm passing by. Now. And I'm fine with that. Man, like I said, bro, like, like you drew your inspiration because everybody doesn't just uh, start something that they want to do and stay with it. Because, you know, like I said, I um, can go back to me. Um, you know, like, I get all these congratulations. And I'm, I'm happy for you. You inspire me. Sure, I'm still trying to juggle between the, um, what's it, what's inside my head and what's, <laughs> and what's reality. And just for you to, you know, go on stage. One of my, one of my products that I sell is a t-shirt. Uh-huh. And it says, you know, right, it says, the heart says to the mind, I don't care. Yeah. And it's all about internal conflict. Because your mind is logical, your mind knows something may not add up, mm-hmm. but your heart is telling you, look, this is what I need, this is what I need to do. That's the majority of the time, the heart wins. It might not be, it might not always be a success, but that's just how it is. Oh yeah, and, and, I, and I just believe in you know, just going after what makes you happy. And stuff like that. Because I always love the movie After Earth. There's a lot of gems in that movie. And just how Janet's character was alone. And he was going through all those um, 
you know, animals that were trying to eat his ass up, but his dad was with him the entire time. While he was injured and clinging up for life, he had to endure all of that to save him. Because he was just, um, <laughs> just crazy, like, just down bad. <laughs> and um, he was just like, man, like, wake up, son. Like, I don't got nobody but you. And I treat everybody like that, that I know that's watching me. Even the ones that I don't know that's watching me, I kind of feel like I'm speaking just through them, you know, just... It's, it's not easy to be able to convey your experiences to everyone because it makes you grow and it makes you a target as well to the ones who like to you, you feel naked it's like like you feel like you're the same naked yeah no, no doubt man so i i remember one episode that I was crying and shit, and everybody was like, man, you need to take that down, man, you look kind of soft and this and that, like, no, because I wanted people to see the human side of me, because it's coming a time where, like, um, this AI stuff, man, like, it's gonna, it's gonna be real fake, people think it's fake now, <laughs> it's gonna be really fake now, Oh, um, like in, I would say like in the next five, ten years, because to the point of we got so comfortable with hiding under our um, shells or under a rock to the point of we, we can't be real. We can't be to the point that we have a particular connection amongst ourselves. And I just think that is just really important that when we talk about what mold us to who we are, we have to be, I would say, um, we have to be very transparent. And uh, I was just talking about when my brother passed away the day I found out that he passed away and how he got to the point of I just felt like somebody just took my soul. And I had tears in my eyes and just was really just reliving that. But I just wanted for everybody to know, like, that's the origin and the objective of why the 1804 show exists. Because if he was still alive, I probably wouldn't be doing this. And just those little things. And, I, and everyone, you know, who um, came on the show and told me, some traumatic things and I tell everybody like if that didn't happen to you where would you be now exactly would you be the same person or would you be altered would you be worse or better because right. to me I feel like whatever we go through it makes us better even though like it changes us for a little bit or you know for a whole lot but it just makes us better because we perceive things differently. Right. It allow us to make us stand on our own two feet. We just realize that nothing's forever. You know, and know that we want to take everybody with us that we love, but we can't. Everybody can't go. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. I definitely hear you on that. Yeah, so, um, what was, like, the first time you performed? Like, can you give us a story and how you conquered that? Yeah. The first time, the first time I've ever been on stage, uh, mind you, when I started, like, I always wrote. I always wrote stories. I always wrote rhymes, poetry. I wrote rap just because it was stuck in my head when I was listening to music. I never recorded. So my first time being on stage, I was standing next to him. No microphone, nothing to say. Yeah. And I don't dance. <laughs> so I was up there looking real awkward uh -huh. and just going with the motions. But 
I knew I needed to have something to say until the next time I'm going to be the one on the microphone talking to people. Yeah. And that's like, that, that first experience, it, it, it kind of was like a little bit jarring because it was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. But at the same time, I was like, I, this, is, this is where I need to be. That's how I felt at the time. Like, this is where I want to be. And the very next time is what it was. It was the same stage. Um, and I had I had songs to do and I he, he tore it down me and him together. If you can do what yeah. I can do, then go and do and it. I, and I bet it was just like a weight lifted off shoulders because it's like now, nah, like, I can do this now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then I had I had some good nights, I had some bad nights. I had nights where I performed for nobody except somebody that was holding the camera. Mm-hmm. And I just had to get through it. But at the same time, like that, that, that first couple times was special. Yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, I wanted to you know go with the topic, just with you know the power and movement and silence and stuff. So, what's your take on that? The power and movement and silence for me is simple. Like you don't, you never want to give away too much. Um, I know it's hard to gauge that sometimes. And me being a person that keeps a lot of things close to chest, mm-hmm. I never want to give away too much. And it's, it's always a different way. Like I, I, I kind of treat certain things on a routine basis until I can do it. But I don't need negativity in my face. Yeah. Once, once I develop it into something that people can appreciate, then I can use it. For example, like my second book, I didn't really tell me people about it until I released it. Yeah, or even then it's because um, I appreciate the support, but I would I would much rather have real people. Yeah. I would much rather go and convince the people that don't know who I am that what I have is something worth it. And then once I do that, everybody else will come along. But I, I didn't want anybody to receive it as my cousin or my nephew or my son. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wanted the first impression to be in the mirror and it told me make sure they hear you got to be like I said, it's two strangers told me this thing. I didn't know that before. So I know I'm going to be on top of it. You can't. I look better than any picture. Yeah, and I learned, like I said, I learned that too. Because when I'm passionate about something, I want to tell everybody, you know, what I feel. And then they want to be like, you know, I know, we, I know you got what you got cooking up when you know, oh, the next show and this and that. And I just go into this um, total nail um, summarization into everybody. And I'll be like, wait a minute, I don't want to tell too much. I don't want to talk too much because you never know who's um, taking notes yeah. or just, you know, willing to take your ideas and stuff because everybody can't formulate a plan or can't construct mm-hmm. a plan. They have to take it from somebody else and they add their own remix. And I don't mind when people come and ask me for advice, but I also be like, what you want to know this for? Like you my competition or something? <laughs> so, but I don't mind like, Giving people like, like pointers, you know night. what I'm saying? If I see that you're serious about starting a podcast or just knowing the ins and outs of it, mm-hmm. but I just always tell everybody is be careful who you help. Because <laughs> that help will like immediately get amnesia and just so quick to just, you know, dismiss everything that you did for. And they would hurt, you know what I'm saying? It breaks your heart when a person that you really thought could be like a protege or just a, a confidant um, end up being your enemy or being that person that, you know, wants you off the way. And, and that's why, like, 
you know, or do things, um, just a little bit and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? We're talking like a paragraph, but I'm like 5% of the 95%. I'm, I'm helping you 5% wise. I'm not going to do the whole uh, graph with you, but I'm going to just give you, you know, just enough for you to, um, you know, pick it up and just do your own thing with. Cause it's like I have to figure out. You gonna have to figure it out. And anything, man, it's just consistency, you know. Cause nobody wanna watch somebody who's lazy. <laughs> you know, what I mean? don't start something and then you, and then just like, okay, I'm gonna do one episode a month, and then now I got a podcast. It's like, no, like you gotta do this shit. Like you're like depending on it. Yeah, yeah. and those algorithms, man, those those algorithms, they're a little too tricky to be doing it. So mm-hmm. you can consistent. Like you gotta, it, it takes a lot of work to break down. No doubt, you, and you have to really um, establish a message and just really like, you know, because like I said, on the fan base, like people gonna find, you know, you instantly, depending on just. Um, hashtags, subject matter, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And people also like sense of humor and charisma. So if you're boring and you this and that, you know, not anybody gonna watch you, you know. And I have a lot of people that watches me for different reasons. So maybe I got a bad female this episode. They're like, man, she's bad, man. And she talking to him? I'm like, who is he? Or her to be talking to him? Like, let me all subscribe to him. Let's see this happen on a frequent basis and stuff. But, you know, I just, I have shows a lot of people that, you know what I'm saying? It's not easy to hold your, be able to hold your own because it's just everybody wants to work with other people and this and that and I'm not knocking people that have co-hosts or have assistants and this and that but it's just a, a spiritual thing where you can do it all alone and it works yeah. it's a spiritual thing you know? I'm sure I'm sure it, 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 you get the little extra uh, you fuck your chest out a little bit more if you can do what I can do, then go to do it. Oh, yeah, and not just, you know, um, it's not arrogant. To me, it's just, it, it, it's being courageous because, like I said, it's just another thing of being able to, like, learn a new skill. Because I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know how to really make um, thumbnails or none of that before. But I wanted to get better, you know what I'm saying? And when you want to get better, you will figure it out yourself. Especially if you're trying to save money. It's, it's expensive, bro. It's expensive trying to just go into business for yourself. And, and I tell everybody, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a 9 to 5 guys, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I just work today. Mm-hmm. I, work, I work a full-time job. I talk about songwriting, story writing, um, writing the, the short for what kind of book material mm-hmm. I work if you can do what I can do then go most of the time I work seven days a week I get a day off and then uh, April I had two days off like I it's not an easy it's no. not an easy road it's not an easy road at all no hell no man. and it was funny because just you know while you working everybody like you know so in tune with the job and this and that, which you have to be and this and that, but it's just like when you want something so bad, you would make time for your dream. Mm-hmm. You know, regardless of how the day is, slow, fast, mid, like you will take probably like five, ten minutes to jot something down, or you, um, you know, put it in your phone and record it. But like, okay, I need to do this, or I need to talk about this, or I need to. Uh, Add something to this, and then you just go back to when you get home. Cause you know I, I go by two o'clock. You know I don't go by one o'clock. I don't punch one o'clock. I punch two o'clock. You know the clock when I'm clocking into my job, and the clock when I'm punching in in the crib. You know what I'm saying? It's my, it's my office. You know what I'm saying? It's serious. It's serious. No doubt. And I just don't understand it. But I used to be like people, so I'm not going like. Shit on nobody. But I just tell everybody, like, man, going to one o'clock, it's not enough. 
I, if you want to get to that point. I think everybody, because like, just like you said, you used to be one of those people. Mm-hmm. I'm the same way. Yeah. I think, I think everybody has to have that realization. Of it. Like words don't, words don't hit home like that. Yeah. It's, it's like a switch that has to flip inside you. You know how they say you gotta know what the why is. Yeah. Like it's it's kind of similar to that where you your desire just becomes that strong. Your desire becomes that strong where you know sacrificing is worth it. Yeah. And every, some people never hit that point, but um, I think that's I think more than any, anything I can tell anybody. I think they just have to figure that out for themselves. Yeah, and figuring it out is so rewarding because you get to the point of I want something better. This something got to change. <laughs> and, and once I hit that point, every day felt like a good day. Um, everything wasn't all features, but yeah, every day I felt improvements in myself. Every day I felt improvements in my life, and. At least the direction I was moving in. Even when I had setbacks, it's like I know, I know what this is. I know what this looked like for everybody else that accomplished what I'm trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. It's I, I don't get that same defeated feeling I used to get when I was at times when I wasn't trying so hard. No doubt. Sometimes no doubt. it sometimes it give you a boost. Sometimes it make you want to get up and fight harder. Mm-hmm. It does, and it, it, you know. What helped me get this mindset was just looking at the movie Life. Cause when you go back and watch it as an adult, you like, damn, this is a sad ass movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just a comedy in it. The comedy lightened it. Yeah, but it's really sad. You know, I never I told somebody I told somebody just yesterday. Oh, I never thought life was a funny movie. Yeah. My whole my whole life or since life came up. Uh-huh. Um, I always thought it was just a real good movie that I enjoyed watching. I thought like the little I thought it was like little extra stuff being said on the set that was funny, like some of the comic like you and them peers can meet each other Like some of the statements was funny But I don't think life Life didn't feel like a comedy no. it, felt, it felt like a drama with some good jokes in it. Yeah It always felt like that But I never I never wanted to stop watching it I always thought it was fun to watch Yeah so what's your favorite scene In that movie? My favorite scene in life? Cause I got one <laughs> That's hard That's hard But let me think um, that's so hard. One of the ones that people don't um, don't bring up is when uh, they had Martin standing on the bottles. Yeah. And they tried to get uh, Eddie Murphy to be the trustee. He called Martin the pie eating something. For some reason, for some reason, that's one of the funniest lines to me. But it's, it's so hard to pick a favorite part of life. The whole the whole movie is so charming. Yeah. Like, I know that's a that's not the way you describe something like that. But the whole movie is so charming. It's like I can't really do lights only pies was a real real good part. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to pick a the game, but since you win the game, well, well, I would say, like, the boom, boom, boom. oh, yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe the boom, 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 part. that might, that might be, yeah, you know, you know the, cause, well, before I give my own favorite scene, but that scene, like, when I look at it differently now, it's just how, when they all, you know what I'm saying, they sell biscuit, <laughs> was doing life, right, mm-hmm. and they was all in jail, but they took themselves out of that camp eight into something luxurious mm-hmm. and just everybody was having a good time and it's just the power and imagination you know what i'm saying and and it was funny but that's how I look at my reality. Because I'm elsewhere. Even though my body is excited on Michigan, man, my mind in Beverly Hills, my mind in Miami, my mind in Jamaica, my mind in um, Mexico. You know, just having fun, living good. And I, and I just laugh. You know, I be laughing at myself a lot of times. And just everybody be like, it was so funny. You know, I just be like, it was so damn silly. But, but that's just how I keep myself from going crazy and being like um, just existing you know what I'm saying in, in this mess but 
Um, but I would say like my favorite part of life was when um, it was the 70s and Martin had took the superintendent to get the new superintendent. Yeah. yeah. And he saw how everything has evolved. Yeah, that's a good part. That's a real good part. And then he looked himself in, him, in, um, in his reflection and he sees himself as an old man. Yeah. And I just look at that scene and just be like, wow. It had to be such a shock to him. It had to be such a shock to him, to his reality. Because like he knew he was in prison for all those years and he knew he wanted to get out. But seeing how much the world had changed, it had to be, it had to be like the Twilight Zone. Yeah. And I've seen people get out and be surprised by new technology and stuff. I saw it happen once when I was real, real young. I was in the um, grocery aisle. And I saw a guy getting shot because it was his first time seeing a bridge. I just, like he had been used to physical food stuff. Yeah, so it was his first time seeing somebody in the bridge fight. It, it was a shock to him. And then I saw it again, um, I want to say last week, when somebody saw somebody use their phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was like, just pay me to phone. Like, it really is. And you spend so many times like that. You, I'm never going through it myself, but just on those couple of experiences, Last one was like, yeah, I think it's, I think it's reality. About you, if else do, yeah, and, and I love that scene because I was, especially when you have I would say, time. I was 27 for like six years, like clockwork, you mentally, because mm-hmm. that's where everything time happened time. to me, was when I was 27. So when I was able to, live, I to free to myself from that mental prison that I was in, the and I just saw how well, I'm glad to everything see you just, I'm just been in sunny days in the I wasted shade, so much time that I can't Even get back. Get and no matter what you're going out, through, hustle, you will have to no limits, I'm still body body. You know, take I heard they talk a about moment me, to realize, like, if I stay like this, these days will last for years. <laughs> but you, so I look at it like this. Like you say, you you feel like you was 27 for six years. Yeah. You might you might have needed that six years more than you know. Like you might have come out of it at the time when you were prepared. To. I know it's I know it feels like wasted time, but whether it's wasted time or productive time, it's all in the past. You still got today and the rest of your life. And I believe in I believe in divine time and I believe in perfect time. Um, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, you you might have you might have had that moment when you needed it. And we just we both. We both just had a conversation about God. Um, I'll take the lead if you just so I said, look, you know it's no limits on what you can do. But even if the skies get cloudy, I'm still running out. 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 I'm still I'm, I'm I'm good. I'm I'm back. Um, let me get get to what I need to do and what I need to display. And I display greatness and just uh, at a short time. Yeah, choice of words. You use. Yeah, you know the name of my book is Display of Power. Right? Yeah, you know that's one of the meanings. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> that was just. Oh, <laughs> that's one of the meanings. It's a personal display of what I'm capable of, what I can present to the world. And a direct, not a challenge, but a direct suggestion for anybody else to display their power to it. Yeah. Wrapped up in a fictional story. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Because I feel like any story is a testament. You know, there's no difference from learning, learning about Job, learning from Samson, learning from out. Solomon, and stuff like that. Even though, know, like, you know, these are the people who probably the only ones that show. We probably only know those people. But I treat everybody's story as a testament or as a chapter that's in the Bible. Because, you know, the Bible, um, yes, it's, it's the Bible, of course, but we live in the Bible today. You know what I'm saying? And the stories is, is being rewritten. No doubt. No doubt. And it's just, to me, I, I do want that to be the last 
of my story. And I wanted to just, you know, create and revamp. And a lot of times, man, it just, I can't believe it because so many people left me for dead. And then just you able to resurrect yourself and just, you know, be reborn, reborn and, and feel like a newborn again person. Mm-hmm. It's just, those people, man, they like, man, I had no idea. You have to experience that to know. Everything you're saying right now makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. You have to experience that to know what it means. Yeah. From the outside, it's, it sounds like crazy talk, but it just sounds like, not gibberish, but it, it just sounds like words. You got to experience that to know what that means. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad, man, because I'll be feeling lonely sometimes when I'll be trying to, to explain this to people and they just be like, yeah, you know, I hear you real, but, you know, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, it's all right, but it's just a lot of, a lot of people wake up at different times, you know, and I understand that, and it's just, like, my, um, Mountain time is going to be different from everyone else's mountain time. It's just going to be a lot more greater because of the fact, like, I just had took my life back. And instead of pointing a finger at people, I take accountability now. Because again, I'm wrong a lot of times. You know, a lot of things that I say, I be in the moment at times, and, and then when I like think about it, even though I was wrong at that moment, I said or did things for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. When I felt it was right at that time, but also Whatever, the information you had at that time, that's you use that to the best of your ability. Yeah, yeah, and and, it, and it's just like you know when you watch like certain documentaries and stuff like that, and you hear like the narrator tell, for example, Forensic Files and stuff like that. The narrator can only do his best with every episode because he didn't know that person. And, but it, he sympathizes because they was murdered and stuff like that. So he has to give us as the viewer the best that he can with the embodiment of that victim. And even with me, when I tell stories about people being lynched, a lot of times I get choked up while I'm talking about it because it's sad. You know, I can actually put myself to where they was hung on the, on the trees or shot and this and that. And I'm just like, damn, like this person went through that or this person went through such an injustice like that and they're not in the history books they're not being discussed or what happened to them being swept under the rug and I feel like I have to tell them you know, I have to allow people in 2024 to know what this person went through back in 1934 and and we appreciate you for carrying the history on. Yeah. For real. Like clockwork, you still it's, it's, my it's necessary. From time to time. Yeah, this is this is it can get, get really <laughs> I even choked up about it. Yeah, a lot of absolutely. after those episodes, I had to take a shot. I'm like, it's too much. <laughs> I definitely agree. Yeah, man, so um I would say like for um like final closing. Cause we're gonna be here for a minute. I don't wanna like, you know what I'm saying, keep you occupied and stuff like that. I want you to enjoy the rest of your Saturday, man. I know you work tomorrow, right? Yeah, so <laughs> see I'm being considerate. Thank you, thank you. So um what are you, from what you can tell us what's the um what, what's like your plan um what you want to do like when you see yourself for five years five years uh, I can't predict it. Before five years, I want to be gainfully self-employed. I intend to be. I plan to be. I'm working to be gainfully self-employed. Um, 
two more books at least published. Mm-hmm. Need more sales um, in four or five years. This merchandise, this merchandise, and the full comic book I'm all in the works right now. They're all available right now. Okay. Um, I'm playing with my lead rebranding right now. Okay. And it's all worth the plan. This is going to take off right now. Um, I got the music on the way. Mm-hmm. I got visual. I got visuals on the way. No limits, cause I'm still I got my target audiences all lined up. Um, right now, all of my merchandise can be found at emeralddog.co. Not dot com, mm-hmm. no M. Emeralddog.co. And my second book is Fred Power is on the ground. Mm-hmm. And Okay, man. Uh, you could just like just send me the links to it, and I can put it like in the description, so people find it and stuff. So Cause shit, ain't nobody gonna uh, remember all that shit you said <laughs> anyway. But but I'm willing to um you know get you out there, man. Cause like I said, I want you to win. You know, you're a good dude, and like I said, we um. Made history, man, and, 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 I'm, and, and, and again, it's just, you know, about, you know, just make, making sure that we support one another, man, as black men, because we all fighting white supremacy, we all just trying to just navigate through all this um, matrix and the maze and stuff like that, so again, it was a pleasure for uh, you coming on it. And just, you know, give me your testimony and sharing your thoughts and, and, and just really just, um, you know, giving us the blueprint and your perspective. So, thank you. So, yeah, man, I appreciate you too, bro. And we go on um, in this. And you're welcome to come back again. Absolutely. You know, anytime. 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 Especially when I made some progress. Especially when I made some serious progress. Mm-hmm. I got to come back and show everybody that's watching that I'm serious about what I'm doing. And I'm taking note. I'm taking note of all of the people, that, all of the early supporters, even from my first year. Mm-hmm. I take note of all of the early supporters because I got some stuff in the work to try to reward those people for helping me. Since you win the game, well, I'm glad to Oh, yeah, no doubt, man. Cool. Well, y'all heard them, so. <laughs> but yeah, y'all, we out, man. Make sure that y'all hit like, comment, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And until next time, we out.